Hey, hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we are gonna be talking about peer-to-peer -peer networking or P2P. More precisely, automatic P2P. And this is a very important topic because it is all about the decentralization of the network layer. When we talk about decentralization, we usually talk about three pillars. One pillar is the decentralization of block production, which was achieved with Shelley. The decentralization, the second pillar, is the decentralization of the governance of the system, which is being actively discussed at the moment. And the third pillar is the decentralization of the networking layer. And when we think about the networking layer, what we want is a resilient, a resistant, and independent network. And perhaps it's going to be clearer to understand why it is very relevant if we take a look at the current state of affairs on, on before P2P hits mainnet. So right now, stake pools on mainnet have to feed their nodes with a topology file. This topology file is nothing but a list of relays with their IPs or DNSs. Uh, and we are telling the node, when we start, please connect to this set of peers. The first problem that arises is that this set of peers is static. You cannot change it. You cannot change it on the fly. If you want to change your topology file, you can change it, but you need to restart your node for it to pick it again. So this is somehow static. Now, moreover, when you establish these connections with your peers in your topology file, these connections only help you to actually ask them for blocks. Hey, do you have a new block? And you will get blocks from them, but you cannot propagate your own blocks, your produced blocks, through this connection. For you to propagate your blocks, you depend on having all the relays on the network actually talking and connecting to your own relay so that they can request you for new blocks. This is a not ideal situation. And for overcoming this a little bit, the community has built a beautiful tool that has served a beautiful purpose and has helped a lot to hold the network together and to, to actually have a good chain density and all of that. And I'm talking about the topology updater. The topology updater, basically what it does is that a stake pool operators run a set of tools, a set of scripts, and the topology updater basically helps them to have a fresh list of validated uh, relays. And by validated, I mean that they have proved that they are running the protocol, that they have the open ports, that they are have been there for a while. So the, that when you put those peers in your topology file, you have the confidence that you will be actually connecting to someone that is actually there in the other side. But it doesn't solve the problem that the topology is still fixed. It's still static. Yes, you can say that it is dynamic, yes, but it changes every... They, I think they run this script every 24 hours or so, so it, it is not really dynamic in, in the very profound way. In this, uh, this situation right now, uh, puts us in a, in a position where we are depending, number one, in this topology of data, and number two, there is also a huge dependency on the IOG relays. So basically, when you register a stake pool, you register the relays that belong to your stake pool. And those are uh, kept in the ledger state. And IOG relays are making sure that we have at least one active connection, at least one active connection with every one of those relays registered on chain. So that in case those stake pools produce a block, they have at least one path for propagating that block, which should be or would be uh, through the IOG relays. But again, this is not an ideal situation. So this is why we bring automatic P2P and with 
Automatic P2P, we achieve the first goal that is that your node is now capable of automatically discover new peers and also automatically establishing connection with the new peers, with those peers in the network. And this is done without actually having to restart your node. It happens constantly. It happens all the time while you're running the node. The node will always discover new peers and establish connections with some of them. So this is a major, major milestone. Moreover, the connections that these nodes can now establish can be full duplex. So they can now play both roles simultaneously. They can play the server role and the client role simultaneously, both nodes that are in this connection. Of course, uh, we still maintain the ability to have uh, some static uh, peers in this, uh, in this topology file, and we are calling them root peers. Root peers help you to bootstrap your node and also uh, help us to tell your node that it should always try to maintain a connection to those root peers. <clears throat> so for example, a very clear use for this is that if you are a block producer node, you want to always maintain a connection to your own relays. So this is why you would put them in your root peers. On the other hand, if you are a if you have a, a relay, you want this relay to always have a connection to its own block producer. So this relay will have the block producer on its root peers. And there are, of course, not only block producers and your own relays in the, in the root peers, there can be also some other public routes, public routes, public relays. And what that means is that you put in your configuration some other relays that do not belong you, to you, but that you always want to maintain or try to maintain a connection with them. So before P2P, if you want to update your topology, your topology file, you need to restart your node. With the P2P version of the node, now you can tweak your topology file and just send a CHOP signal to the process and it will pick up the new topology without actually having to restart it, which is important because restarting may take, may take something sometime between one and two minutes on mainnet sometimes. So it is important that you want to pick up new topology as fast as possible, of course. So apart from managing these connections, apart from discovering and creating, establishing these connections, the node with P2P is now able to dynamically and actively manage those connections. And what do I mean with that? Well, the node will keep like three sets of, uh, of peers, like three lists of peers. The first one is what we call the cold peers. Cold peers is just a list of known peers. They are there, but we don't have any established connection just yet. We just have it in case we need to create a new connection, but we are not having any established connection right now. The next set is the set of warm peers. Warm peers are those uh, that actually, actually have an established connection, but it is only used for network measurement and we are not implementing any of the node-to-node -node mini protocols over that connection. So it's just, we are just, we just know that we are on the other side of the, of, the, of the wire, but we are not actually running anything related to Cardano or to the blockchain for that matter in the, in the, over that connection. And the final set is the hot peers set. And this is the set of peers that actually have an active connection that is being used for running the node-to-node -node mini protocols. So, um, the node actually manages these lists dynamically. So a newly discovered peer is first put into the cold peers list. And then it might be at some point promoted 
to warm peer. And by promoting it means that we have established a connection with them. And if needed, we can also promote that, that peer to the hot peer list to actually use that connection for running the protocols, for interchanging information. And the same goes in the other direction. We can demote peers from, for example, from the hot list. If we have a peer that uh, its connection is being a little bit shaky, it's a little bit unstable, we are not getting uh, adequate responses, then we will demote that hot peer to warm peer. If that connection remains to be unstable, perhaps eventually it will be demoted to be a cold peer. And if we, are a, if we have a cold peer list that is growing too much, we might still uh, start forgetting some of those peers, removing them from this cold peer list. So there is constant changes in this list. The node is actively managing this list and managing the connection so that your node is always in an optimal state of, uh, of connections. These connections are not only uh, amongst those nodes that are very tied together, that are very close to each other in terms of latency or hops. Uh, what matters here is that we want to have a very good mix uh, of distance because the node will try to have some of those uh, hot peers very close, but also some of those hot peers might be a little bit further away and some of other peers might be even further away. And the purpose of this is to actually prevent some uh, problems that might arise if, for example, there is a problem in a particular region in the globe because of natural disaster or whatever that turns down some of the peers, well, you want to still have some connections with peers that are a little bit further away and some that are even further away that go through different routes so that it helps in the end to have a lively network and, uh, and a better block propagation across the globe. So your node will maintain a very diverse uh, hot peers in terms of their uh, round trips. So um, this, is, this is, of course, a very good design. Let me just talk about this other classification. Apart from being cold, warm, or hot, we classify the peers in another way. And it's like in a nested categorization. The first set is like the largest one, is the set of known peers. The set of known peers consists of all the cold, the warm, and the hot peers. So it is the entire uh, set of the three lists together. Then we have another subset, a subset of the known peers that is the established peers. Established peers consist of warm and hot peers. And you want to have somewhere around 10 and 50 uh, established peers. And finally, we have another subset, which is the set of the active peers, which are actually running consensus protocols. And this consists of only the hot peers. And in this subset, you want to have somewhere around two to 20 hot peers in the list. This pretty much reminds me of the Matryoshka dolls. And so you want the known peers set, you have it, it's like the full doll. <laughs> then you have the established peers. And finally, you have the active peers. And this concept is important because it will be relevant later in a few minutes when we actually prepare our configuration file to work in P2P. We will use these concepts of active, established, and known peers to actually configure or prepare our configuration file. I'm leaving you here a couple of resources that I strongly recommend you to visit. One is an article, the other one is an interview with the networking team lead, you're marching. And well, it's time for us to put our hands to work and actually have a, uh, our
configuration file and our topology file tweaked so that we can get the best out of it. But that will be part of the next video. So see you there. Thank you very much.